Dealing with arguments and conflict is never easy. You invited me, remember? There are many ways to learn about resolving conflict, including drama role plays. Who is your friend? Who's Anna Maria? An, un an unreliable friend? At Ridgeway School in Devon, they use two schemes to try and help people. Peer mediation and a buddy system. Kirsty and Emma are both pupils at Ridgeway. They were brought together because they had a similar problem with friends at previous schools. It's very divided in school, and you're either very popular or kind of ignored or picked on. And, I mean, once you're, like, being picked on, it, you stay like that for, like, most of the time. Emma and Kirsty's problems started when they fell out with their friends. They were both picked on for speaking out and challenging friends' behaviour at their old schools. They just, like, said things about people and said it sometimes they were mean to people and they didn't really care about how the person who they're being mean to felt about it. I didn't know how not to be friends with them without causing a total um, riot argument, kind of. To be in the situation I was in, it was it's isolating, you don't know what to do, you go home and you worry. <laughs> I'm a big worrier, and so I just you worry about it constantly, and you don't know what to do, and you think of the most drastic thing you could do, and you don't really know how to deal with the situation. And because you get so wrapped up in it, you wouldn't, you can't take a step back and realise what you need to do. And so you just get confused and isolated. Yeah, it tends to be when you go home and you're on your own before like your parents come home from work and you just worry constantly. And then when they come home, you're like, oh, I better stop worrying so we know nothing's wrong because I don't want to tell them anything. Emma and Kirsty ended up leaving their old schools <laughs> the buddy system seems to have helped them resolve some of their worries by sharing their experience. Yeah, the buddy system or peer mentoring system is where older people that are like in the school um, help like the lower school people, whether they have a problem or and then they can go and talk to like maybe somebody that isn't their teacher, but somebody that may understand their problem. There are people out there and not knowing what to do and not being able to get out of the situation that they're in. And so I think that people that do this are lucky that they can talk to someone rather than being so alone and isolated and confused. I think it's really important to be able to talk to someone and it's much easier to talk to someone who you don't know but who's not too much older than you, like a teacher. It's, it's kind of easier because you don't really know them and they don't know much about you so they can't judge you in any way. No, I went. Um, and talk to Emma as if I was a friend and I didn't want to put it any other way because I know that you can't talk to teachers the way you could talk to just an older person because then at least you could talk to me like, more easily and maybe tell me more stuff about what's happening rather than keeping some of it locked away. Another way of sorting out problems and resolving conflicts can be with a peer mediation scheme. Each year, a group of Year 7s volunteer to be trained in the scheme by the local specialists in mediation. Skills are things you can learn. I can teach you some of the things to do with being a mentor, a mediator, or a buddy. I can teach you some of those things. But I can't make you into the right person to do the job. That's already in you. So what do you think are the skills and qualities that we need in order to do this job? What do you reckon, Sam? You've got to be impartial. Impartial, brilliant. Gemma, good listener. Josh, patient. Jack, good communicator. Someone who's taken the job seriously. Confident. Chris, sensible. Jess, you need to be approachable. Yeah. Working together is quite a key skill. Keep what's told to you private. This isn't a place where we're going to... The training has a set of rules like only one person speaking at a time and active listening, which means really listening to what the other person is saying. Things will also be kept private unless there is a very serious problem that a teacher must be told about. My mediator, my co mediator, and I can't do that if you're not sticking to the ground rules. The trained peer mediators work in pairs to support each other. 
In a session, they listen to people who have the problem and echo back their understanding of the conflict. It is important that people don't start blaming each other as the aim is to resolve the problem, not find out whose fault it was. We listen to both of you, or, or however many there is, we listen to all of you. We won't tell you um, how to solve your problem. OK. You're quite clear about that. So we're not here to decide who's right or wrong. No one's going to get into trouble. Friendships are powerful things. And when one group of friends felt upset and isolated, they asked for a peer mediation session to help solve the problem. There was one group, which was me, Beth, and a girl called Sophie, and there was another group called, which was Vicky and Jessie and Melody. And um, we were sitting separately having our lunch, and um, me and Beth and Sophie were talking about a boy that um, Beth fancied. And the other group thought that um, we were talking about them, so they started talking about us. Well, it, it felt a bit upsetting, like we thought they didn't like us no more, because they just went off. And then, so me and Jessie got a bit upset and started saying stuff. Sophie's my cousin as well, so, and I've known her for all my life, so really, I think it was a bit horrible. Jessie, Vicky, Sophie, Sophie and Beth came to us um, one of the days when we were mediating, and then they were, they were like really upset between each other. We spoke to them as a group, all together. Then we split them off into groups, smaller groups, and spoke to them each individually. And they told us their tale of events, and then we came up with ideas on how to solve it, came back together as a whole group, and come with one solution. When we said each of our stories, they sort of like recapped on it, and then like thought of what they thought of the stories by putting them both together. And then they tried to make us come up with a solution ourselves. And I think they felt that they could like really trust us with like what they've said, and if they've told us a bit that like they don't want the other girls to know, then they felt confident that we wouldn't say anything. The girls resolved their conflict and are now friends again. But do girls and boys argue over different kinds of things? Boys' problems and girls' problems are two different things, completely different. Because the girls can be horrible about each other, and the boys just fight and say nasty things. But if they've got anything to say about each other, they say it to their faces. Surely the girls are my tutor. They all say, oh, if anyone's got anything to say, say it to my face, instead of behind each other's back. <laughs> Mediation training for me has made me more like confident and I feel like if my friends have got a problem, I feel I can help them as well. I think it's given me loads of skills. Yeah, but I just can't think of any. It's just like um, that, well, it's taught me that there are actually two sides to a story. Yeah. Two year 10 pupils that have been mediating together since their training feel the scheme is very important, but remember that certain things must be referred to a teacher. Something that we couldn't deal with would probably be like severe bullying, um, because if you came across that, then we're not really taught to deal with that. If you're like in a situation and you've got two people there and one of them saying um, they've started bullying me and it's like their first conflict and so you'd sit in the middle, have them sat at each end and you just get each one to say to the other one why they think they fell out. When the students come in and they're about to be mediated, I first of all explain to them that both of them are not going to be blamed for anything. Um, the, like, this conversation that we have will not go past these four walls. I uh, basically explain that to him at first and like, explain what I, must, what I have to tell to a teacher and what I don't. Other than just resolving the conflict, it like, helps them to understand their own feelings. They like, think to themselves, oh, unless I stop this now, it's going to make me really angry. Or I need to calm down. So it just lets them understand like what their body's telling them to do through their emotions.
we want young people to have a good understanding of conflict resolution. We want them to, um, we want the world to be better, basically. It's massive to say, but we want everyone to know that there are other ways of resolving conflict instead of punching someone in the face. In South London, Isla and Anna Maria work with LEAP Confronting Conflict, a specialist organisation developing conflict resolution and mediation strategies. I'm quite selfish at times, so therefore people touch my things, that will get me really frustrated. And I don't like unreliability, I like people to stick to their word. But most of the time I can be really calm and I try not to get, let things get to me, but I do burst out at times. Before I was a peer mediator, I used to get in a lot of trouble, um, especially when, because I come from a family with five girls, so we always fight and everything. It's just in us to fight all the time. I thought one day that this is going to affect my life further, so I really need to do something about it, and that's when mediation sessions and training came in. To resolve conflict, you really need to look at what you're doing first before you start turning your head to look at someone else and what they're doing. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I've got to go. Leap now. use role okay. play to explore how a typical situation can yeah. escalate into conflict. Uh, how am I late? I'm really more than half an hour late. How is it half an hour late when I was less than five minutes away? I'm really pleased. Like, just be serious. You're late. Apologise. You know what, yeah? I don't even care anymore. I'm really pleased. Leave it out. You know what, yeah? I've had enough of this. Just as long as you're paying for my ticket back to my house, I'm not really bothered. Just get on my face. Excuse you? I'm really pleased. Just get out. Young people need to know that um, with conflict, there are choices and consequences. So therefore, if you make a certain choice, there will be these consequences. But if you make a different choice, then you have completely different consequences. And to conflict, there's always a cycle. So therefore, if you don't break the cycle and change something in the cycle, then conflict will always happen and it will never end. You promised to come on time and you're late. No, you invited me, remember? So because I invited you, you can be late? Because you invited me, you have the right to wait no. for me. Young people really need to know that conflict doesn't always have to, have to happen. You could be the more intelligent person and walk away from it. You don't always have to face it head on. Your friend? They you. describe the things that cause arguments as triggers or red flags. Okay, so what's the red flag? Unreliability and cheek. Okay, so how are you feeling now? Angry and frustrated and disrespected. Once you know how anger makes you feel and what triggers your anger, you learn how, you learn how, to, con how to control it. I learned through peer mediation to be a bit more patient, um, to not voice all my opinions, because that sometimes leads to conflict by voicing your opinions to everyone or anyone. When you're in a situation where you're always arguing, you don't really hear the other person. You just hear what you want to hear and you misinterpret that on purpose. So when we did mediation training, you learn how to listen to both sides of the argument.